Good morning, everyone. Are, are you going to come up here and sing? You want to? Do you know this song? It's Rudy, right? Yes. Rudy. 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 Back to see you. Well, why why people are working on Rudy? Maybe he'll come up and sing with me or not. And with us, it's not just me. But let's everybody go ahead and stand on this beautifully sunny day. Julie's gonna play the drum. I think Doug's got his guitar going. Rudy, maybe next time, okay? Huh? Tambourine. Oh, maybe next time we'll get Rudy up here. Okay, hit it, Kevin. Silver and Orville had a dream. Nothing is impossible. Imagine if a man took wing. Nothing is impossible. People it can't be done. Man's not. Their dream changed everything. They dare to touch the sky. There's a place inside of you where nothing is impossible. Oh, you you were born into this world. Everything you need, oh, don't you know that she starts in the mold you believe? Dream. When you blow, I see My leaders weren't here, and I said, just watch Julie, but Julie didn't know I was going to do it, and then I just got nervous. Oh, wow. So, yeah, that's how that works. Out. Let's welcome Cindy. Good morning. Good morning to all of you, too. Uh, welcome. Um, we welcome you, either virtually or here in family and relative. <laughs> our, the Fillmores, and of course, our way shower, Jesus the Christ, as well. And so as we do that, and as we start our... for today we do join in our statement of faith please join with me there is only one presence and one please join as well thank you God. 
that we have come to this place. Victoria healing. Okay. Uh, Sierra Van oh. uh, Sierra. Okay. Tom healing. Okay. Would Milwaukee what? Police department. Say okay. For safety. Okay. Diane. Mark and Jack. Charlene. Sorry, sorry, okay. Safe and healthy birth. How's that? Okay. And so enjoy. Yeah. Corey? Oh. Encouragement, okay. Andy? I hope. Cindy and Jim and Michael, Cindy and Dick? And Jim. Oh, and Jim, okay. Jim. <laughs> okay, Kathleen? Turkey. Okay. Yep, for sure. Yeah. Tony, birthday. Okay, any more? All right, let's uh, join me. Let's uh, <clears throat> just center ourselves and know that we are always connected with God and all of God's goodness, that we are always able to act as channels for God's blessing in the world. And let's send that blessing to all those that have requested it today for Victoria for healing and Tom, cousin Mark and Jack, for Crystal and Joy, for Paula and Michael and Cindy and Dick and Jin and Ken and Jennifer's family, just send out uh, love, light, and healing energy to all of these people, knowing that God knows what they need, and as they align with God's blessing, everything is possible, and everything is already received. We trust that this is so, and we just send out additional love and blessings to them. And also let's send out energy and light to Sierra that she might get her internship through the grant that she wishes. That the Milwaukee Police Department might be able to do their job in safety. 
that there's a healthy birth for Emily, easy and safe and, and a healthy child. We want to send encouragement also to Paula as well as healing. And finally, let us just send light and energy to Turkey and Syria, all those victims and the families that are working through so much hardship, loss of life, loss of possessions, loss of jobs. Just trust that God is there in every action and that all the powers throughout the world that can be of assistance <clears throat> will be guided to assist in the best and most popular way or positive way. For this, we pray in the Christ spirit. Amen. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Today's word is compassion. It's a fitting one, I think. Yes, acts of loving compassion build my strength. Whether in my community or across the world, many people face hardships. As a member of the human family, I am inspired to undertake compassionate action and help however I can. Sometimes just a prayerful thought or a simple blessing can make a powerful difference in someone's life. Other times I may be able to take more direct action. I may listen to someone deeply as they share their concerns of their heart. I may volunteer to drive them somewhere or complete errands for them. Regardless of the form my compassionate action takes, I am motivated to be of sacred service, to bring the love and care of God into manifest form through my decisive actions. And for Matthew, <clears throat> when he went to shore, he saw a great crowd and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. So as chaplain, I will be over in the prayer box corner if anyone wants to have prayer together or discuss something with me after service. And uh, with that, I think it is time for some music. So we've got Julie and Doug here. And I, are you joining them, Linda? And Linda's voice as well. So please, uh, please listen. And feel free to hum along, sing along, because your thoughts are prayers. Our thoughts are prayers, and we are Lord. Please pray. Our thoughts are prayers. Listen to what you're saying. Seek a higher consciousness. State of peacefulness. And know that God is always there. And every thought becomes a prayer. Our thoughts are prayers, the tools that we create with, the tools that we create with. Our thoughts are prayers, that spirit resonates with, that spirit resonates with. Seek a high consciousness, a state of peacefulness, and know that God is always there. Every thought. And every thought becomes a prayer. Let's try the whole thing again and really internalize it. Our thoughts are prayers, and we are always praying. Our thoughts are prayers. Listen to what you're saying. Seek a heart. Consciousness, a state of peacefulness, and know that God is always there. And every thought becomes a prayer. Second verse is the tools that we create with, that spirit resonates with. Our thoughts are prayers. The tools that we create with, our thoughts are prayers. 
that spirit resonates with. Seek a higher consciousness, a state of peacefulness, and know that God is always there. And every thought becomes a prayer. And every thought becomes a prayer. Thank you, Julie and Doug and Linda. Mm -hmm. And now we get the person who requests that song every time she's here. We're grateful right. travels up from Illinois to be able to speak to us at least once a month. Maybe sometime we'll get it more. I don't know. That's just my my thought. Uh, I don't know about the rest of you. But anyway, we have Reverend Pab Patty Pippia with us today talking about love. Well, it is the month of love, isn't it? Couple days, it'll be uh, Valentine's Day and everybody will be, you know, spreading the love, I guess. Telling their, their um, well, well, let me put it this way. Love is not always romantic. It's an extension of what love is because God is love. Okay, God is love. L O V E. And we are loved. L O V E D. Okay, God loves us no matter what we do or say or be in this world. There isn't anything that. I know I forgot to put my mic on. I'm sorry. I got to deal with a black waffle. <laughs> um, that love is the most important thing there is in life. Who does not want to feel loved and safe? Raise your hand. We all do, don't we? Because it gives us a sense of security, it gives us a sense of well being, happiness. And the word for today is compassion. You know, that's an extension of God, that's an extension of love. And we are loved by God no matter what. And we all want to know what our life purpose is, right? You know, what am I supposed to be doing in life? We are extension. God. So that means our purpose here on this planet in this physical body or vessels of God that extend love out to circumstances, to people, to places, to things, to to other parts of the country. You know, may divine order be established in Turkey. God is there. God is present. We are sitting in the midst of God right now. Let's wake up to that. We get so off track with our thinking, our thoughts, our prayers. What are you thinking about today? What did you think about yesterday? How much of it was positive? How much of it was loving? How much of it was caring? How much of it was creative? How many of it, how much of it was positive? How much of it was righteous thinking? And what's righteous thinking? Right thinking. So what if you made a judgment or a criticism? Criticism. I do it all day long sometimes. I go, oops, got to correct that thought. And then I have to think of something to wash that one out. Do you understand what I'm saying? There's spiritual perfection. There's not human perfection. Remember that. Their God is only perfect. But the spirit of God lives inside of us as us saying, express me, express me. Put your hand out, help that person, open up the door. You see somebody struggling. 
You know, you see a homeless person. Can I tell you something? Stop giving them a $1 bill, would you? Stop insulting them. What can you buy for $1 today? Nothing. How about giving them a five? Up it and give it with love. Give it with love. They're a little less unfortunate. And as you give it to them, bless them, bless that money that it, that it blesses them in ways that they never thought possible. Put that energy of love in it. You know, when people get married, you know, we got to ask, are you getting married for love or are you getting married for lust? Because once the lust is gone, all you got is love to hold that relationship together. I think one of the most beautiful things I see in life is two elderly people holding hands walking down the street. Just takes my breath away. That is love. After all those years they've been together, God only knows what they've been through. A lot of them have lost children. That's the most excruciating pain a human being can experience is the loss of a child. There's no coming back from that. You might get through it, but you never get over it. The time you get over it is the time when it is your time for ascension and they're standing at the wake gateway going, mom, dad, I've been waiting for you. I've been watching over you and you're reunited. So how are you living your life in a loving way? How are you coming from the core of your Christ's essence, which is love? Are you having compassion? Are you having empathy? Are you trying kindness every day? You know, it's like even coming here. I, I mean, driving here. And, you know, it's only an hour, 10 minute drive. It's not a big deal, okay? It seemed like I got behind every person <laughs> that decided that the speed limit for them on the expressway was 45. <laughs> well, first of all, what was coming out of my mouth was not very Christ-like. I speed around them and then I give them a dirty look. They don't even see me. And then I get past them and I go and pat, what was that all about? What are you going to talk about today, love? So I just say, God, forgive me and bless them. Come on, we all do it. We all do it. <laughs> That's the part of a human being, you know? It's the spirit of God that's perfect inside of us. But we can work, we can cultivate that spirit of God inside of us to come out and to express more. I want to read to you what I got out of um, the revealing word. Uh, what Charles Fillmore wrote on love. And I just, you know, it just touches my heart so deeply. And he says, love, the pure essence of being, the pure essence of being that binds together the whole human family. That means love is the energy that connects all of us with everybody and everything in this world. It's an energy. It's an energy. All of the attributes of God, love is undoubtedly the most beautiful. You know, I get to watch people die. The other day I had to tell this one lady, I said, would you please hurry up? You've been over two weeks now. Here, not even eating, not drinking, you know, it's time to shut this, you know, but I'm saying this way. I go, honey, that's, you know, worn out. You are going to an experience, a love that you have never experienced before. And a peace that passes all understanding. I said, I really think you need to go for it. Sometimes being direct with people is the best approach. Be direct, honest, and loving. Do you know the next day she died? Now, 
She was without food and water for two weeks. The body didn't need anything. I don't know what, maybe it was my word she was waiting for. She wanted to know what was on the other side. So I, I, I told her, love and peace that passes all understanding. Charles Fillmore goes on that says, the divine mind love is the power that joins and binds in human harmony, the universe and everything in it, the great harmonizing principle known to humankind. Divine order is now harmonizing what is happening in Syria and Turkey and each and every one of your lives. You are a country unto yourself. You are a world unto yourself. You are a galaxy of God that is spinning in this world, ready to take on and love more, to love more deeply, to love more passionately, to love more unconditionally. The divine love is impersonal. It loves for the sake of loving. It is not concerned with what or who it loves, nor with a return of love. Some people say, well, you know, I love them. Why don't they love me back? They don't have to love you back. If it's not, you know what, what's that movie? They're just not into you. You know, maybe they're just not into you with love, okay? You know, maybe they're not awakened to what love is in their own lives. It goes on to say, like the sun, its joy is in the sun, is in the shining, shining, yeah, tongues, I'm talking in tongues today. The, it's joy in the sh shining forth of its nature. Love suffereth long and is kind. When they say love suffereth long, that means love is patient. Love is patient. We live in an instant gratification society. I want what I want when I want. Can we microwave that? God is a process. God is not a human being. God is an energy field that is creative and it takes time because God is a perfectionist and God never shows up late, ever, 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 ever. Doesn't show up early, doesn't show up late. God shows up on time. Always, amen, sister. Love is an inner quality. It insists that all is good by refusing to see anything but good. It causes the quality finally to appear upmost it's in itself and in all things. You know, when terrible things happen, terrible things happen. And you just don't go, oh God, that's good. When you're looking at disaster, a death, anything. I feel sad. And I just know that it's my job to send love. So I close my eyes and I see a beam of light come from my heart to wherever I'm sending it. Whether it's to Turkey or I'm watching a TikTok or a YouTube video about some person that wasn't really human that left their dog behind when they moved. You know, it saddens my heart. I got, I stopped myself from cussing them out. So that is an improvement. But, you know, I, I, and then I just have to watch the miracle. I have to watch the whole video to make sure that that dog gets its forever home where it gets healed. 
So then I'll sit with my phone and I close my eyes and I send energy to wherever that puppy is and for all the people that are working on dogs like that. I send, I see the light come from my hand in there. So, you know, I have a housemate. She goes, what are you doing? I go, what do you think I'm doing? She goes, oh, sorry. She knows when I got the hand and the camera out, the phone out, I'm sending love. I'm sending energy, healing energy to that person, place, and thing. That's how we begin to live a loving life. I'd rather do that instead of turning on the news. I can't watch the news anymore. My energy levels are way too sensitive. I just, I, it, it's my, my heart becomes so heavy. And then I have to go for an energy clearing. because of my compassion and my empathy. And sometimes maybe your heart feels heavy and you don't know why. Maybe it's because subconsciously you've been thinking about somebody, you know, the thought that just sort of makes you sad. Love is the greatest harmonizer and healer. Whoever calls on God as Holy Spirit for healing is calling on divine love. Divine love will bring your, your own to you, adjust all misunderstandings, and make your life <clears throat> and affairs healthy, happy, harmonious, and free. Love, therefore, is the fulfillment of the law. We want to live the laws of God, then we have to do what Jesus said. Take away everything else in the Bible and live your life from the greatest commandment of all. Love the Lord your God with all your mind, your heart, your soul, your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And if you don't know how you're loving your neighbor, then you better take a look at how are you loving yourself. I have to say today, I love myself. I mean, there's still a lot of issues I got to work on, but I mean, you take me 30 years ago, I, I didn't love myself. I was very insecure. I'm, I mean, I'm not as pretty as I am today as I was 30 years ago. It took a lot of work, a lot of therapy, a lot of 12 step programs, you know, to get me where I am and to get into the consciousness of saying, okay, why is this happening in my life? What is the message from the universe telling me? Here's another symbol of how I was not too loving this week. Okay. Ah, I love it. Okay, let's hear it. Let's hear it. All right. Um, you know, my car, um, my car has been um, a bit of a challenge. And it's a fairly new car. It's a 2017. It's only got 88,000 miles. But all of a sudden, I need to get an oil consumption test done. For the love of God. That means that I might have to have my whole engine replaced. Thank God I have not hit 100,000 miles, and I am very grateful for that. Because if they have to replace it, okay, it's covered. So for that, I'm grateful. But I don't like the inconvenience of all this, to be honest. You know, so I have to keep changing my attitude with it. And then my heater went out when it's minus one degrees. And that, that I had to pay for, and that was almost a thousand dollars, but I had to pay it in love. I had to pay it in love. And I had to thank God that I had a thousand dollars, almost a thousand dollars it was. You know, maybe I couldn't go out and have a wild time with that money, but I have heat in my car and I'm very grateful for that. Do you see how our thought patterns go? I know I'm not the only one that have, have these issues. It's everyday living. Everyday living. You know, love is the greatest commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself. How are you loving God? What do you think about God? How do you, how do you invite 
God into your life. How do you pray to God? How do you talk to God? You talk to God as, as God's your best friend? Do you talk to God as something way out there instead of within here? We got to knock it off, friends. God, yeah, God's out there. But if we want a personal relationship with God, then we got to do it in here. We have to close our eyes, go within. And you know what? The Christ lives inside of us. The Christ love is inside of us. And I love this one song, and I'll probably ask them to do this song. <laughs> Hi, Julie. <laughs> And this is when I, as somebody is at, um, at, when I'm at the bedside of somebody that, that is, um, you know, making their ascension, you know, and I do this, uh, you know, I'll, I'll sing it if family's not around. If family's around, then I just say it because I only make joyful noise onto the Lord, you know, and I made noise. And it is, come Holy Spirit, I need you. Come Holy Spirit, I pray. Come with your strength and your power. Come in your most special way. Come, dear God, and bless me today. And may I be a blessing. Whatever it is that I want today, I add it to the end of that. Come in your own special way. Come, Holy Spirit, I need you. Come, Holy Spirit, I pray. Come with your strength and your power. Come in your most special ways. That means I can't do it by myself, folks, and neither can you. We're so hard-headed human beings. We always think we can do everything by ourselves. But let's invite God in. I think it's the Muslims. They pray three times a day. They get their little prayer mat out every day at a certain time. They get down on their knees, and they humbly pray to their God. So I ask you, how do you humbly pray to your God? Not saying that you need a prayer mat and, you know, kneel on your knees. Whatever is comfortable for you. Maybe it's sitting in your recliner and just closing your eyes. You know, I like sitting in my recliner and gently rocking myself because that's very comforting to me and telling me everything's going to be okay. I got it, Patty. I got it. You know what? And God's got you too. God plays no favorites. God plays no favorites. You know, love is our purpose here on earth. It is to be loving. And it is to recognize that we are greatly loved and adored by God in every single way. It's time that we wake up and say, I am greatly loved by God. Let's affirm that together. I am greatly loved. Now I want you to put your hands over your heart, take in a deep breath, exhale out. Let the stress go, just let the stress go. Let it drop into the floor, into the earth and let it just fade away. Take another deep breath, just let it go, just let it go. Let, let us pray. I am greatly loved by God. Together, I am greatly loved by God. Feel it. Now take that, that affirmation, get out of your head, focus now in your heart area, put your attention in your heart area and pray. I am greatly loved by God. I am greatly loved by God. I am greatly loved by God. Feel the difference? Feel the difference? God is loving you every moment with every breath you take. And I want you and me to start loving ourselves more, more deeply, more passionately, more unconditionally. Let's call forth the Christ within us, 
who is our hope of glory. If we believe that Christ is our hope of glory, then we need to call forth the Christ in us. And let us begin our meditation by saying, come Holy Spirit, we need you. Come Holy Spirit, we pray. Come with your strength and your power. Come in your most special ways. I am blessed. I am encouraged by the love of God that is within me. I am whole. I am healthy. I am wealthy. Because the love of God lives in me. And it is the Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. Right now, take a moment. Talk to your God. Hand over what you need to hand over for God to take care of. And ask God for what it is that you desire in your life right now. Just for you, nobody else. You, only you. Feel the breath of God moving in and through you as you. With every breath you have taken, God has loved you more and more every day. Because God's unlimited. God's love is unlimited. We thank you, God, for loving us no matter what. Thank you for never turning away from us. Thank you, God, for never criticizing us or judging us. Thank you, God, for always being there. And God, forgive, forgive us for not asking you for more help. We ask you, dear God, put in our minds and our heart to ask you more in our everyday living. For your help, for your mercy and your grace. And for your favor, may it fall upon us. May we be open and receptive and responsive. To only you, God, and our highest and best good. And so it is. Amen. You are blessed and you are encouraged with every breath you take. Thank you for letting me love you. Thank you, Reverend Patty. Take a deep breath and take that in. As we take out our green, there are several ways you can give as well. Take this energy, we put it forth and extend our love to the community because we know that as we are here, we represent all that love. We share, we also know that some of this energy will go toward our parking lot and toward our minister coming in. 
There are two envelopes for those that don't know it. There's the blue one, which is our regular tithes and offerings. There is a red one if you wanna make an additional donation toward our special projects. And I invite all of us to join in our offering prayer. There is no lack or limitation. Freely I give and freely I receive from God's abundance. I am blessed as I give and unity is blessed in receiving. And we have Julie and Doug, and I don't see Linda, so just the two of you on this one. Yeah, that's, all right. You know, we always are inviting Rudy to everything that we do. So, <laughs> Rudy, is Rudy going to sing today? He hasn't practiced this one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, he's awakening. Are you coming up? All right. This is an echo one. The words that you'll be repeating are when God made me, when God made me. This is a Neil Young song. Was he thinking about my country or the color of my skin? Was he thinking about my religion and the way I worshipped him? Did he create just me in his image or every living thing when God made me? When God was he planning only for believers or for those who just have pain? Did he envision all the wars that were fought in his name? Did he say there was only one way to be close to me? When God made me, when God made me, sing that word. When God made me, when God made me. of love say who we would choose when God made me when God made me when God made me when God made me did he give me the gift of voice so some could silence me did he give me the gift of vision, not knowing what I might see? Did he give us the gift of compassion to help my fellow man? When God made me, when God made me, when God made me. When God made me, and God made me. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, Kevin. Yes, sir, dog. I love the man of me. Oh, yeah. Well, as you know, you all have the power to to bless these gifts, and I'm I'm so grateful that you, you have um, realized that you have that ability to bless. You have that ability 
to forgive, just like Jesus did. And I just ask that God's infinite blessings fall upon you. But most of all, I believe that God's infinite blessings are falling upon you right now. So I really pray that you feel those blessings. You are open, receptive, and responsive to those blessings. And may the wealth of God pour into your life, into your mind, into your heart, and into your soul, and into your body. And may you live a life of abundance. Because we are so grateful here at Unity in Milwaukee for your gifts of love that support this church. And I say, amen. Amen. Thank you. I could let you do the announcements too. <laughs> <laughs> so we have lots of things always happening here. Um, and next week we, we have Brian Drafton Griffin, who will be speaking on the impact of change thinking. And depending upon I'll, we'll get to it later what he's doing after the service it's somewhere else on the slide so i won't jump into that and there's a new book starting thursday called kindred uh by octavia butler that's at 9 30 on thursdays here or virtually you're welcome to join uh talk to kevin if you want to join it virtually uh following that book study um, again, you can do it individually or together. You don't have to attend both events. We have a silent unity prayer service about 11 o'clock, again, in person or virtually. It's all about 15, 20 minutes, folks. And uh, we pray the same thing that we pray on Sunday morning in the library at about 9.30. The discussion groups are continuing as usual. Of course, just double checking with Joanne uh, Reverend Joanne Bauman, who leads that, um, and our life journey groups, the second and fourth Mondays at 6.30. Also see Kevin if you want to be part of that. Kevin says the topic this week is prayer, attending every one of those to be a part of it. You're welcome to come join whenever it, you are available. Uh, the website has got lots of wonderful stuff on there activities past lessons you can hear this sunday message again if you need to remind yourself that you are loved um, anytime you're down and needing to pick up come on over to the website see all the other stuff that we've got going on wednesday's guided meditations are awesome i think kevin is welcoming a few other people to lead do some of those too if you'd like um you know if you're led to do a meditation you know get a hold of him and he'd be happy to do that and i think even if it's just an audio you don't have to be in front of camera but if you want to he does some great stuff but i know he'd like some help with that and uh, speaking of that volunteers are always needed here even just to turn this camera you know it's it's not a lot of work so that we uh we get some coffee for after service. All of us love our coffee, right? And our and our treats and stuff. Um, either bringing a few things, helping set it up, whatever it takes. Um, opening our shades, uh, our, our drapes in the morning, turning on our lights, whatever you can do. Um, we are a community. We are a family. Think of it that way. What would you do at home? And I thank everybody that's been a part of this service and keeping it going and keeping our community going every week. Uh, class today. I think that's next week. That's next week. Uh, Reverend Brian will be doing a class on some Unity Foundations. Um, our, the basic review of Unity principles. Uh, you are welcome to join us uh, from 1 to 2.30. Um, and the suggested love off. Doing anything in between or are people on their own for lunch and coming back, Kevin? Okay, new fellowship. Okay, because that's long, a long break in there. Um, I wonder if he was thinking his one o'clock versus our one o'clock. Like we, we, we do twelve. Um, 
So keep an eye on the weekly mailing as if, in case that might change or make sure you bring, bring some lunch with you or run out and come on back for that class to start. We don't want to lose you. So uh, don't go home. <laughs> just take some run out or maybe a couple people can organize ordering something in too. Uh, that's just my thought. E annual bake sale in potluck. Miss Dorothy, is that you? No, she's not doing that this year. Okay. But I'm sure she's going to you rah rah. So okay we, we didn't we didn't recruit her today that's all right that means we've got another volunteer to work on it right and that's okay but we know miss dorothy is going to be you rah rah and everybody to be buying some big goods um april 30th after service it's also our annual membership meeting it starts about noon so keep that on your calendar um so that we are here voting uh, for our new uh trustees uh board members i'm forgetting which community i'm part of right now no i'm just kidding um and as i said the meeting is uh from about noon to some bylaws to on that that has to go through the community that can't the board just can't make those decisions so um and just what's what's happening here what is the plan what has our board been doing what are, what are the plans to keep going and we're, we're going to move forward. Um, I think there's an opportunity usually to ask some questions um, as well. I turned back and made sure of that. You know, to what to move forward. Just let folks know that you want to remain a member. And if you've moved or changed your phone numbers or any of that, or even that's right. Um, suggested donation again, uh, love offering, 10 bucks you know, covers, covers the cost of all that wonderful stuff. Bring a friend, bring, bring a, 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 a someone you want to be cut from a friend with and share and have a discussion about the movie afterwards. Um, potluck and games, as we know, we kind of changed our Pictionary session due to God's nature uh, calling us a couple weeks ago and we wanted to get some home, get home and get off the ice. So it is uh, now going to be the last, last Sunday in February, February 26th after service. Fun fellowship, little, little competition, little friendly competition. Come on and join us um, right after service. Again, potluck is part of that as well. And then we'll play some games of Pictionary. And our love is peace. And we invite you all to stand as you are able, circle as you're able, and join in our peace song. That was we, we would we would we, 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 we like we like that song, but oh. Uh, <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Our prayer for protection, the light, the light of God, God surrounds us, us, the love of God in Hold us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and so it is. Amen.